All right, and hello and welcome to Phoenixville Library. I'm Mark Pinto, and uh, tonight's program is designed to put you to sleep. It is. Uh, but not during the program, hopefully, afterwards. We are proud to have with us uh, tonight the next generation of uh, the McCormicks here. Uh, we've had uh, Dr. Karen McCormick and uh, her uh, husband, uh, Dr. Bill Keenan, here a number of times. And uh, tonight we're pleased to have Dr. Skyler McCormick from the McCormick Chiropractic give us his 10 sips to better sleep. Yes. Welcome. Right. Take it away. Welcome, how are you doing? Have people on Zoom and say hi. This is so fun. Uh, and actually, I'm like, there's people I don't even know. I get to see, but now I can say hi to everybody. How you doing? Alrighty, so we're here to talk about, as Mark, thank you for the lovely introduction from, uh, from Mark Pinto there, 10 you steps to better then? your sleep. Um, am I good? Yeah, yeah you're, you're good. Mark right now. It's not on you. Uh, you're putting the air. This, he, this one he's here. fine. He's so, fine, dear. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, introduce myself. Like I said, I am a third. I'm actually a third generational chiropractor, which is super fun. So my my great uncles um, were both chiropractors um, back you know back in the day, and then uh, my father and then my aunt and uncle, which are Dr. Bill Keenan and Dr. Karen McCormick, um, all chiropractors. My brother and my sister are both chiropractors as well. Um, my brother married a chiropractor. We're, our family parties are interesting. Uh, let's put it that way. We, a lot of a lot of chat about the body and, um, and about chiropractic. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of into it. Um, so I uh, practice in um, in Limerick, uh, pretty close down the road, right off of Ridge Pike, um, and with my aunt and my uncle. Um, we have a practice there at Limerick Chiropractic. Um, and also on my you know my many many free time with uh, also as a doctor, I also teach at her Science College. I'm an adjunct professor. Um, I teach twice a week and I teach um, you know uh, medical terminology, which is super fun. Um, get to be around a uh, freshman. I also I graduated from her sinus, so it's cool I get to come back and teach my old school. Um, so today we're going to talk about the 10 different things to help us sleep better because who is not sleeping? Who's having trouble sleeping in the room maybe? Or is Mark in the back? Yeah, everyone's, in, even myself sometimes. You know, hey, this is why I love talking about it because hey, we all tend to have problems falling asleep a lot of times. So we're going to talk about our 10 different things, but before I begin, I always like to ask with this, um, hey, so how many hours a night do you think we should actually be sleeping? Do we know? Six and eight. Six and eight, seven to eight, yeah. Those are usually that six to eight, somewhere around there, is a really, it's a good marker. Now that's a good marker for, you know, people, I, even like, I'm a young guy, but even myself, all the way up until actually as we tend to get a little bit older, um, we actually need to sleep a little bit less. So I always love to show this little chart as an idea to saying how much we really should be sleeping. So. When we are zero to three months, so those newborns into there, so this will be my, so my wife is actually due in March, which is super exciting. Um, our newborn baby is gonna be sleeping for about 14 to 17 hours, quite a bit. Now, I may not be sleeping that way, and you know, I'm sure as anyone here that's a parent, that's not a child, especially as a newborn, you don't really sleep that much. Uh, but babies themselves should be sleeping, you know, 14 to 17 hours, and you can see as you start to get older, that time, as you start to go, it starts to get less and less and less and less. Now, those teenagers, and I'm gonna yell at my mom, because my mom used to wake me up at the crack of dawn at 7 a.m. and say, all right, come on, it's time to get up, and I'm really tired, and I didn't know why. She's like, come on, get up, but I did need more sleep. Mom, let me sleep in. Um, so, as we get older, we tend, so kids, even like school age, all the way up to 12 years old, need almost nine to 12 hours. So if they're going to bed, you know, around eight o'clock, they really need that sleep all the way until almost eight in the morning, it's kind of why I like to push that school actually should start later. Um, because as school starts later, these kids are actually able to sleep. It's better for their bodies, better for them to, you know, to go to function and actually mature. Um, so we really need a lot more sleep than we think. Now again, I love that you guys were saying, hey, six to eight, really, you know, seven to eight, but as we get older, again, it starts to drop more and more. Why? It's just the ability of the body just doesn't like to sleep as much as we said, tend to get older. Um, so here's the hours of much we want to sleep for us. Um, we want to think, hey, usually 18 to 60, or you know, as we tend to get older again, that six to eight tends to be a good tends to be a good range. So the next question I always like to ask: What is sleep, and why? Why do we sleep? What do we think we sleep for? And it's even on the PowerPoint. Let me see. <laughs> why do we Why do we sleep? We need to rest our body. Yes, we need to rest. We need to rest our bodies. We need to be able to recover. We need to be able to repair. Um, you know, sleep is really important for your brain to kind of quiet down and be able to talk to itself. It also helps you learn new things. So that's what I usually say for. This is what I tell all my students all the time. I'm like, study 
and go to bed. <laughs> Study and get some sleep. Because when you're sleeping, that's when your brain talks to itself. It talks to itself, helps you actually be able to learn new information, um, and it helps you repair all your body. So you know, these professional athletes, they sleep like 12 hours, they sleep a lot because they really need to repair themselves. So sleep's super important because it helps you repair and recover, especially if you have injuries, you need more sleep. Um, and especially when you are, um, you know, when you're learning new material or if you want to learn something and keep it in your brain, you need to make sure you sleep. All right, are we all awake? Are we awake? Okay. Let's talk about our next thing. So let's go into some of the things that we have when we don't get sleep, which some of everyone's like, oh, this is some of the stuff that I'm gonna be feeling. So a lot of the things we're seeing in here, increases of stroke, even increases of diabetes can start to happen if you don't get enough sleep. You know, increases of uh, heart attack, poor concentration anytime you wake up and you don't have your coffee and you're like, I can't focus and I can't work. Hey, so a lot of times these things here, all sleep affects every single aspect of our health. It's one of the pillars of, you know, our health. We have, you know, eating, <laughs> eating, sleeping, you know, drinking water. These are some of the most important things. So you can see there's a wide variety of different things that can start to happen to you when you're not getting enough sleep. Um, so let's talk about what are the things that we can do to help us actually get better sleep. Um, and I'm gonna give you my 10 tips that you can actually start to do you know, today as early as you can to start to implement them into your lives. So first, number one, sunlight, really early in the morning. Sounds kind of crazy, but the moment that sun comes up and you come up with the sun, I don't want you to stare into the sun. <laughs> But go, if you're able, if it's not you know 10 degrees, now it's starting to get colder, I'm like wearing a jacket, I'm like actually cold now. Um, get outside, look at the sun, I'm sorry, don't look into the sun and burn your eyes, but get outside a little bit, get that sunlight into your eyes. What it actually does is it starts to activate what's called your circadian rhythm. Does anybody know what your circadian rhythm is? So, do you know, idea, baby? I know what it is, but I don't know how to explain it. Living with uh, the daytime, yeah. staying awake during the day and sleeping at night. Yes. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Just saying, hey, our circadian rhythm is the way that your body is processing how the hours you're going to be awake and the hours that you're going to end up sleeping. So it helps basically give it a kickstart. It's like you know injecting injecting a little bit of fuel in the in the mower before it goes. It helps wake everything up into your brain because that sunlight gets into your eyes goes right into your brain and says, it starts to activate all these pathways to keep you awake. So the more, it's kind of like why they want, and we'll get to it, why we want everything really dark when we're trying to sleep. Because a lot of extra light is gonna help you wake up. So if you're ever really tired, just start turning on all the lights and it'll wake you up a little bit more. Because um, your, your eyes are actually, believe it or not, part of your brain. So they're the one part of your brain that's actually on the outside that everyone can see, and that's why a lot of times they say the eyes are like the soul um, to the body, because those eyes are really important to make sure you get that sunlight. So, sunlight, waking up, getting some sunlight. Now, the biggest thing that the concern that I usually, I usually have is, hey, I get up way before the sun. I'm up at like 4, 4.50, 5 o'clock in the morning, because I'm usually going to the gym. Um, and hey, the sun's not up at that point, so what do you do? A lot of times what you can't do is at least trying to turn on some of the lights maybe in the house. Again, go. I go to the gym, I work out, so I'm getting some more of that artificial light. Any way that you can start to get you know, light into your eyes if you're waking up early. All right, next one here. The next one, one of my favorites, not one of my favorites, I wish I could drink more coffee. Uh, no caffeine, eight hours before bed. So someone like myself, like I said, okay, so I get up at five, I usually go to bed around nine, 10 o'clock, somewhere into there. That means eight hours before that, I'm not having any caffeine. And I go a little crazy, but I'm now I'm getting used to it now, so it's no caffeine. Usually at that point, eight hours before there is like 11, 12 o'clock. So I stop drinking all my coffee, around 11, 12 o'clock. The reason is, is, again, it's gonna disrupt your circadian rhythms, so it's gonna disrupt that ability of your body to go, okay, it's time for sleep, it's time for bed. Anytime you drink caffeine, it's gonna activate what's called your sympathetic nervous system, which is that, that nervous system that's part of your body that, you know, if you see a tiger, you wanna run away from the tiger, it's called fight or flight. So it really activates that and makes your body really like almost ramp up and get really excited. It's kinda, um, you know, that's the thing, not, no coffee or caffeine after you have dinner which my grandmother now is, is rolling in her grave, most likely, unfortunately, because every single time after dinner, she'd always serve us coffee, and always have a coffee, and she'd drink eight cups of coffee, you know, right before she went to bed, and so would still be able to pass out. I don't know how she did it. Um, it's amazing. But yeah, no caffeine before bed. It's shown all the time to keep you up, because we really want to make sure that time is there to, to you know, calm everything down. A great substitute 
which I was trying to push to my grandmother, was, hey, some decaffeinated tea, you know, some hot water, even decaf coffee. Decaf coffee still has a little caffeine in it, but if you have to try to kick the habit, that's a great thing with it. So anything to help decrease that caffeine eight hours before bed. Um, the other reason why it's eight hours too, caffeine takes, takes a lot of hours to get through your body. So even though you drink caffeine in the morning, it's still affecting you all the way throughout the day. So it takes a long time for that caffeine to finally be whoo, excreted and get out of that body. So that's why we say eight hours. Cool, let's take a look at my number three, blue lights. So limiting your blue lights. Now, anybody give me an example of where blue light comes from that we use and everybody has every single day? That we screen. Screens, yes, mm -hmm. screens, cell phones, phones. Mm -hmm. Limiting our phones, basically limiting phones, but also too, laptops, you know, it can be coming from, sometimes it can come from some of the lights. So what blue light is, blue light is just a, a, for, um, a form of a wavelength that happens into visible light that you end up seeing. So you even, get, you even get blue light when you are getting it from the sun. It's normal, it's a normal thing with it. However, now all of our devices have tons and tons of blue light with them. So one of the things that we can do is you can actually go into the settings of your phone and set a time to limit the blue light with it. So that's what I do with my phone at all times. I always have a device where it looks almost kind of darker because you, I have it set to limit the blue light that's coming out of the phone itself. Um, there's ways to do it, you can Google it, um, and it's one of the great ways to say, hey, to really decrease the amount of light that's coming out of that phone and the devices at night. So, one of the one things, limit an hour before bed because we really want to start to try to calm ourselves down beforehand, um, so no TV. However, I break that rule because my, light, my wife just loves to watch TV before bed, which is okay. Um, so what I actually did, you can even buy off Amazon for $10 these uh, blue light glasses. So now here's the other thing too about glasses. My wife wears glasses. Hers actually came from her ophthalmologist that have a blue light filter on them. So it kind of works out too. It's able to drop it down. Technology is amazing. Um, so buying some, some glasses, they're plastic glasses. They're very fashionable. Um, I end up putting them on and it helps limit it for that hour beforehand. Um, the other one that's big, limiting an hour behind waking, this is probably the one I am the worst at because the moment I wake up I grab my phone and I start looking at my phone um, because I'm a millennial and I can't get off my phone. So limiting one hour before, um, before you upon waking up, again because that blue light is going to start setting some things off. Um, so an hour before bed, an hour before waking up, this is a big one that I see a lot of people end up breaking is limiting it between 11 p.m. and 4 p.m. 4 a.m. Um, hey, happens to me sometimes too, I wake up, I can't go back to sleep. Um, my first instinct is go downstairs and turn on the TV or to grab my phone. It's kind of an issue because that blue light is now messing with that circadian rhythms or messing your brain's ability to think, well wait, I should really actually be, you know, I should really be sleeping um, at this point. But now it thinks, oh, at, at one in the morning, oh, oh, it must be time to get up because you're just putting tons and tons of light into your eyes. Um, and that actually starts to affect your ability to fall back asleep. Yes. We had a fabulous seminar about a month ago where um, professional people came and they said how dangerous even these fluorescent lights and they had monitors and they showed that in addition uh, to shut it off, uh, completely shut it down, <coughs> pull the plug yeah. it, and still it's we don't okay. realize we don't realize how dangerous this is. Yeah, and this is, and it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of light. Like even this there is more light than you think getting into your brain. Which um, they told to completely shut everything down. Yes. Completely, and they would not approve of what you're saying here. Oh, which one? Of doing all what? of them, because you're not completely shutting it down. Oh yeah, right, right, right. And, and they brought monitors and it showed evidence. Yeah, of saying like, hey, like get up, like get rid of all the light now. Uh, in tradition, anything that's electromagnetic. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing is, I it's like I don't disagree, mm -hmm. um, but in terms of being realistic, because I have to, you know, like I finish up my work, I have to do my work for my class, I have to grade papers, I have to, you know, it's like I have to be on my laptop even though if it's like eight or nine o'clock. You live within, like you live within the means. Um, and the, and the definition of light is natural light. It's it's. Uh, they were professionals, and Mark knows what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't disagree because it all this, it all disrupts our ability to, to fall asleep and wake up and you know, wake up in time. So this is why I say limit um, because a lot, a lot, at least with me, 
I wish it was more realistic that I could just trash all this, but I do need my phone in order to run my business and you know be able to be with students and be able to have be on call for students. So I wish I wish I could. I wish I could live. I wish I could live off the grid. Um, I can't. I have. <laughs> I have responsibilities to take care of. Um, so let's talk about the next one. This cute picture of our dog. So eating our protein before bed. The reason I have with this one in terms of eating before bed. Now a lot of times, one of the th biggest things I get with people who get upset about is, oh well, you're not really supposed to eat before bed. True, if you're trying to drop weight. If you're trying to lose weight, a lot of times they say, hey, no eating after, you know, like after you after dinner, seven or eight, maybe like three, four hours before. Um, but a lot of times what happens, has anyone tried to fall asleep when they're hungry? <laughs> it's very, very hard. <laughs> you're, you're like, I can't, I can't, I can only focus on how hungry I am. So the reason I want to do protein is it gives you what's called satiety, or being satiated, or feeling full. So I would say making sure that we have uh, protein before and when we're eating dinner in some way. And even if we're vegetarian, you can still get protein from tons of our, you know, tons of our vegetables. Um, there's different sources, even like protein powders that are all uh, vegan that you're able to get. Some type of protein, because the protein's gonna make you feel full, so that when you are going to bed, you're not sitting up there thinking, hearing, or hearing the rumble into the stomach before bed. Um, making sure we get that protein. The other thing I always like to say about eating some protein is a lot of times when we wake up in the middle of the night and we feel like our mind's racing, our heart is racing a lot of times, a lot of times just taking a moment to sit down and eat a little bit of protein of something, could be like an old piece of chicken, whatever the dinner was that night, eating a little bit of that helps calm that down. And the reason why a lot of times we wake up in that middle of the night and we feel like our heart's racing, our mind's racing, we're feeling really anxious, um, is actually because our hormones are a little, you know, fluctuating a little bit too much. And we're having too much of, has anyone heard of the hormone cortisol? Yes, cortisol, it's, our, it's another one that says with its big flight, flight and flight. It's the one that's like, everyone hears is like, oh, cortisol's bad. Cortisol isn't bad, you're supposed to have cortisol. You're supposed to have that, that hormone in the early parts of the day in order to wake you up. It's really, really important. But if we are so stressed out all day, all the time, and what happens is that it's, all, it's high all the time, you're stressed all the time, and eventually you just crash. And you end up crashing, and different hormones start to really wake up, and they wake you up in the middle of the night, and you're really anxious. So the way to level everything out, eat some protein. So my, my number one thing I'd say, making sure we're, we're eating, we're full before bed. I know I'm not, not full of cookies and cakes and things, but full of like a good, a good meal before bed. And then if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're feeling really anxious, it's okay to go and grab something else to eat in order to help you start to calm back down and be able to go to bed. Okay? Let's take a look. Protein. All right. So, the next one. You no know, water for about an hour before bed. The only reason <coughs> is, um, normally again, you want to make sure you're hydrated throughout the day. That's kind of the trade-off with this, is making sure you're hydrated. The reason I say no water is because, hey, when we wake up and we start drinking a ton of water, we're going to have to pee. And we're going to have to wake up, and then you wake up to pee, and then you're like, okay, I'm awake now, I can't go back to sleep. So, limiting the amount of water you're having before bed. Um, another thing is, too, is that it's, like, it's important, too, to make sure you're hydrating throughout the day, because as you, as you start to drink large quantities of water very quickly, you actually end up peeing more. It's a reflex that happens in your body. Um, it thinks it needs to level yourself out. So, taking water and just chugging it is great. You're really supposed to just sip it slowly throughout the day. Carrying, that's why I carry my big water bottle. You see the giant one there that my wife got me? The, beautiful green color, sipping it slowly throughout the day as best we can. All right, number six, not too hard when we live up here in the north, however, keeping our room nice and nice and cold. Um, so they even shows with our like, hey, having our blankets, it's okay to have blankets, but the room itself, we want it to be 65 degrees or colder, and that's really cold, that's a cold room. Um, the reason we want it to be that cold, my wife hates it, she, she, she's throwing on 20 different socks and all this different stuff, but it's because our body actually needs to drop about two to three degrees in temperature before you're able to fall asleep. And when you wake up, you actually start to raise your temperature two to three degrees as well in order for you to wake yourself up. So this is another way that you can cue your body to say, oh, now it's time to go to sleep. It's time to actually fall asleep, is that everything's a little bit colder. Now it doesn't mean you can't wrap yourself in the blankets, but the area outside in the room itself needs to be 65 degrees or colder in order for you to start to really slow your body down and drop that temperature. Um, yeah, keeping the room nice and cold. Yeah, my wife hates me for that one. <laughs> it's scientifically proven, she just hates it. <laughs> All right, one of my other favorites. Dark, 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 nice and dark. Dark room, dark room. Eye masks, they're great. Blackout, your bedroom should be blackout curtains. 
Um, we have blackout curtains in ours. It should be, you should get up in the middle of the night and be like, I almost can't even see dark. Um, the reason, again, it's that same issue with keeping our circadian rhythms correct and making sure we're not getting the sunlight, not having the phone, you know, looking at the phone with the light, everything's nice and dark. Um, the darker it is, the better those eyes and your brain are thinking, okay, it's time to go to sleep. Um, so that's my, usually my things with it, investing some blackout curtains, the eye mask, um, yeah, any way you can keep it really dark and really cold. This one, this one's one of my favorite. Beds are for sleeping. And one other activity that's slightly inappropriate. Two things, that's the only thing it's for, but it's only for sleeping, only, only for sleeping. It's not for doing your taxes or watching TV or anything else. Um, honestly, not even, I almost don't even say even for reading. Um, it's none of those things. And the reason is, is we want our brain to only associate the bed with going to sleep. So to think that the moment you get in that bed, your brain thinks, and it's like you're you're almost like the um, you're almost like the, the, the famous experiment of the Pavlov's dog, where they you know they rang a bell and the dog started salivating before they even gave him something. It's you're training yourself to think the moment you touch that bed, you are just passing you're just passing out and you're going to sleep. So nothing else in that bed should ever be used for except for sleeping. All right, number nine. So no exercise. And again, it's very similar to the caffeine. So no exercise two hours before bed. I have, um, we have a lot of patients that say they go on walks um, after dinner, which is fine. You just wanna say, hey, at least two hours before that, like two, you should let your body calm down and relax the two hours after that, because you're really increasing your heart rate, you're increasing your brain activity, um, increases metabolic rates are all your body's processes, so it just keeps everything moving with it. Um, and it really, really wakes up. And one of the biggest things too, is it raises your body temperature. So now, just like on our last one here, we can't drop our body temperature down because we just exercised. So a lot of times I'll get this on, um, you know, some of the people like my age, they'll finish work and then they're like, oh yeah, it's nine o'clock at night. And they go to the gym and then they're, they gotta go to bed in an hour. I'm like, you can't, and they, they just can't sleep. They're like, I can't, I can't relax. I'm like, they're like I even took like a, a cold shower and stuff. I'm like, yeah, because you just did something really, you know, intense. So now you gotta be able to have that that ability to have everything calm down. Um, so no exercise. No exercise, I even say not even like, try to fit your, your after, so a lot of time, again, after dinner walks, um, try to fit exercise early in the morning. That's actually probably the best time to exercise, really, early in the morning. Well, next time to exercise is whenever you can. Um, but truly, it's not right before you go to bed, because again, it makes sense. You're all, you know, you wire yourself up. You wanna be able to calm yourself down. All right, last one here, have a routine. Probably one of the most important ones, um, really is. Again, it's very similar to um, your bed just for sleeping, is keeping a, a, the same routine. I do the same thing every night, and my wife thinks I'm crazy, but I do the, I do the same routine. I, I wash my face first before I brush my teeth. I, you know, I, I read my book before I do this, and then I, I, I fill my water just to here. And I'm a little crazy, but I do it for a reason. I, it's, it's, I know I'm doing it for a reason. It's so that I know, and my brain knows, okay, we are starting to get quiet down and go to sleep. And I noticed, um, like it was just a couple days ago, I had to, I actually had to um, do some grading. And I looked at the watch, and I'm like, man, I'm up later looking at my laptop than I usually am. And I found myself not being able to, to calm myself down because I wasn't doing step by step the same exact thing each time right before I went to bed. Um, so making sure that we are really good in keeping a nice, solid routine each thing, each night, um, and making sure that some of these things are the same as here. So not exercise, make sure exercise isn't part of the routine, you know, making sure that, uh, let's see, you know, making sure that chugging water isn't part of the routine. We want to make sure that we are keeping ourselves moving, um, keeping ourselves not moving, keeping ourselves like slowing it, slowing things down at least like an hour before bed. Um, yeah, so these are my, these are my 10 things. Um, believe it or not, it's funny, a lot of these tend to be, I always like, I get the questions after and I'm like, no, this is really about like sleeping or none of it's really about like, you know, what type of pillow I should use or the mattress or this. And I'm like, because all of that doesn't matter at all if you didn't take care of all these 10 things. Like, it's crazy to say, but your sleep matters more but about the things that you did during the day than it does about all the things that you try to do at night. Um, so I always ask, too, a lot of times we get the questions, they're like, well, you're a chiropractor. What, what's the best mattress? And what's the best pillow? I'm like, all these things. <laughs> these are the best mattress and pillow. Because um, if you really take care of all these things, then we can start to take care of, okay, yeah, looking at your mattress, looking at your pillow, um, you know, looking at some of those other things, how you sleep, um, 
you know, a lot of people ask me what's the best position to sleep in. I said the one that helps you sleep for eight straight hours a night and doesn't wake, doesn't wake you up in the middle of the night um, is really the best position. Because truly, it's sleep is so important in helping us rebuild our bodies and repair and keep our minds moving. Um, but making sure we have all these 10 things in check. And if we do, hey, there's a good chance you're probably getting a good night's sleep at least seven or eight. Again, seven or eight hours. Um, so yeah, so that's my 10. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, we're done for that. Any questions? Any, quite, any chat questions? <laughs> yeah, feel free to open, uh, type in the chat those on Zoom, or you can unmute yourself uh, when the time arises. Should we address one of those about the dark? Well, I always, always have to get up in the middle of the night to go to bed. So That's we keep the night light on, not in the bedroom, but in the bathroom, so yeah. it's light enough to trickle over everything. And like, if you make it dark, then what do you do? So that that is usually the one the one caveat or you know like one difference I have with it. Yes, please don't have it to the point where you're tripping, <laughs> tripping and harming yourself. Um, the night light's fine. Just make sure it is a very dim, which most night lights are. They have on purpose. Make sure it's very dim. It's not emitting like a really bright light. Like now they have those. And they have these crazy light bulbs that you can like set the mood and all these different types of wavelengths and everything. Just ones that are, you know, much softer. Like the softer, yellower, you know, not the, you know, the fluorescent lights, but much softer lights. Um, and keep them away from at least, like, that you can't see it in your bed, if that makes sense. So if like, say, say your bathroom is like right here, and you can see the light from the from where you're laying in the bed, I would probably try to move that night light somewhere else. Well, this um, is the wall that's like facing like the bedroom's here and the wall's here so it's facing the opposite direction. It's not so you can't see it like Perfect, yeah. Then that's fine. It's um and again it's like in an ideal world, yeah, I'd love the room to be <laughs> pitch black dark, but then again, yeah, I would step on my dog in the middle, <laughs> middle of the night if I had to go. That would be a problem. Um so you you know you try to work it out as, as, as best you can with it. But yeah, night lights are night lights are fine, just not I would just I wouldn't have them right next to the bed. Um you know, yeah, unless unless you know, like unless you're like my five year old nephew that gets a little scared and that's okay. Um, yeah, that's usually what I was saying. That's a good question. Any others? Any chats? Anybody on Zoom? Zoom, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hi. I was going to type, but I figured I'll just talk. Please. Um, yeah. I, I've noticed that um, I sleep best when I hear a very soothing voice in the background rather than complete quiet. And I've gotten into the habit of tuning into this little YouTube thing, not the light, it's black screen, but um, and as soon as they start talking, this man's gentle voice, I fall asleep and I'm through the whole night. And if I don't put it on, I don't fall asleep. Yeah. What? What is the effect of, of sound? So that is very similar to that is very similar to training your brain to think that it's time for bed. So it's the same concept of as your bed being for sleep and as having a routine. Um, it's totally fine um, as long honestly there hasn't been there hasn't been any scientific studies to show that sound you know is going to affect your sleep. Um, but what it can do is that it's train what it's doing is the moment you hear it. Um, that's why they, they have apps now that will sit, you know, they'll do white noises or, or brown noises or things like that on your phone. Uh, that's totally fine because, again, it's training your brain to say, oh, this is my time to, to calm down and go to sleep. So if, if you need it, but if it, like, it's fine if you need it. Um, yeah, you know, like some kids, it works for me. Great. Honestly, that's, it's not a problem at all. It's not affecting anything. Um, I mean, think about some of the kids that have white, you know, they, they need the white noise machines or something like that. That's fine. Um, yeah. So, a question from uh, chat. Yes. Any tips to curb snoring or noisy breathing that's not really traditional snoring? It's not stopping breathing like a sleep apnea. It's not like a sleep apnea. Right. Okay. Because um, yeah, because the sleep apnea ones are always, you know, you have to sit. Um, you get those special mattresses that can push you up and you know open up the airways um, to help with snoring. Um, it's kind of crazy. But they do, um, you can do a form of it called mouth taping. Um, you literally take a little bit of tape, a little piece of tape, and you literally have it go, and it can be like scotch tape. You put it right over top of the mouth. I know people are laughing already. You put a little bit over the mouth. Don't shut it completely so that you, you know, open it up a little bit so you can sort of breathe. 
But what that does, that little piece of tape, is it cues your nose to start to actually and breathe in and out. Because really when you sleep, you're actually supposed to sleep. We're using um, breathing in your nose and not in and out of the mouth. It's much better for your lungs to, to breathe through the nose itself and instead of the mouth. Um, so you can put a little bit of tape before you go to bed. My wife thinks I'm, I do it. I actually do it. My wife thinks I'm crazy again. Um, put a little piece of tape into there, breathing in and out through the nose. It just cues, um, it cues your nose to be used instead of the mouth because when you snore, it's you know, coming out through the mouth itself. So it cues into the nose itself. You can take a little piece, piece of tape. Um, that's something that's you know, passive. Um, I mean, honestly, too, meditation, there's a reason meditation exists in terms of teaching you to calm your breath and in and out and control the breath actually has helped shown to help um, people with sleep, sleep apnea and snoring. Um, so that's a great question. I would say, um, you know, the mouth taping and then um, getting into some type of breathing meditation, you can find them on YouTube. Um, there's not one that's truly been shown to be better, to be honest. It's kind of just anything you can do to cue you to use your nose and not sit there with um, with the mouth open. Because some of that light snoring is really because you're, you're, you're mouth breathing more than you are using your nose. Well, I found if I sleep on my back, I have that post-nasal drip. Yeah. And I'll, I'll start snoring. If I go on my side, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, and that's not, honestly, yeah, just changing position sometimes. Uh, oh, that's why like coming up, you know, takes that pressure, takes that pressure off from the, the drip coming down from the sleep down. Yeah. And I would think your wife would be happy that you're not making noise to keep her awake. I know you would think, yeah. But, but then again, she looks at me like, "What are you doing?" Like, if you saw my routine to sleep, she'd be like, "What? This this, this guy's crazy." Uh, you yes. mean meditation that we may practice that we close our mouths mm -hmm. and take a breath in and out, yes. so this is help us not to just know. Yes. Another one, you just close your mouth with the tape, so you, or or just put it. So you put it lightly over over the strip. So you don't you don't you don't want to close your mouth completely. You just have it. You can have it be slightly open, and you just take the tape and you just put it right lightly over it. Because um, it's not the whole point isn't to prevent you from you know you'll no matter what sometimes it, you'll breathe out of your mouth while you're sleeping. But it just it's a it's a small like subconscious cue. Subconscious. Yeah, that your that your nose for your nose to say oh wait I should really be. Because my husband, I just the pillow, that he's snoring a little bit, yeah. And believe me, the, the taping is, it takes a while to get used to. Don't get frustrated. Like, first couple times I started using it, I was like, I woke up a little bit. Get the thing off of me. Like, it's okay. Yeah. Any other questions off Zoom or here? How about some uh, insomnia advice for those who have it? What's the best thing to do when you just can't? Can't go back to bed. You can't, yeah. yeah um, truly, I'd say a lot. Of, a lot of times, it's anything that's. It's going to be your calming activities. Um, that's why I always say eating. Like eating, anything that's going to kick up um, the opposite side of your nervous system. So a lot of times, kind of a lot of times, insomnia can be because one part of the nervous system again we call it our sympathetic. It wakes us up and keeps you active. Um, we want to do all the opposite things of that. So that's eating and maybe meditation. It could be reading. Um, you know, insomnia is tough because there, there's a lot of different reasons why somebody would have insomnia. Like there can be like medical reasons um, that need to be seen by like a sleep therapist or a sleep, you know, like a sleep doctor. Um, so my usual thing, again, if it's if it's serious, yeah, you got to go see someone for it. Um, but if it's just one or two, one or two nights here out of the, I forget the actual classification. I think it's like out of 30 nights. I think if there's like 10 or 11, you're considered an insomnia. But I can't remember. Mm -hmm. You're like waking up in the middle of the night. Um, but if it's only if it's only you know once or twice a week, it's okay. Just making sure we're eating. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at the TV. You know, go into reading, eating, any you know slow breathing, sleep depth, anything that you can try to like try to get yourself to calm down beforehand. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, I understand that constant exposure throughout the day with electronics yes. does change uh, your brain waves. I know somebody that has been working with computers close to 50 years. Yeah. Deals with India, China, Japan. And he's called up in the middle of the night. The days, ladies and gentlemen, that he is not exposed to electronic computer. Yeah. He's a totally, totally different person. Also, people that have sleep apnea, part of the problem is their overweight. Yes. Uh, it could be their their spinal column is not properly aligned. A lot of them have breathing machines. There's a lot involved that. Uh, uh, yeah. There's a, there, lot there, a there's a lot. There's a lot involved. There's a lot involved. Yeah, and that's and that's why I always say I'm like, hey, here's at least ten things that you can, you know, almost anyone can kind of do. Um, 
that because there's a lot of gifts. There's a lot of symptoms where it's like seeing a professional. You know, you may need to see a professional for it because there's it's so multifactorial as the things that affect your sleep. Um, and that can affect it, and also, I understand, um, and I've tried it myself. They say if you can cool, if you cannot get to sleep, try to put. Um, um, a wet cloth or something on your stomach yeah. because that does help uh, your your body's trying to adjust with the coolness yes. there and, and um, I think sometimes Americans are afraid to uh, contact professionals who are of a different culture than Americans uh, we're the richest a nation with the most health insurance and we're the sickest of all the nations. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's rough. Uh, there, there's a lot to, to consider. Um, a lot of people have the breathing machines and a lot of times it's not it's not fit properly. Yeah. And they're struggling to get that oxygen, so absolutely. So do you believe if, if, if your spine is correctly aligned with maybe, like this lovely lady said, a body pillow Sometimes you have to have it in between your legs. Yeah, oh. yeah, and that's and that's one of the big, uh, especially <laughs> yeah. I'll talk about the alignment with when you sleep, because um, it depends on you know it depends on what type of sleep. It's hard to change your sleep because it's so subconscious. Um, but when you're when you are as aligned as possible, um, like if you're a back sleeper, you're going to need a, a cutout, you know, to let that neck be able to hang back because you're supposed to have a curve into the neck. Um, you know, nobody should be a belly sleeper in my opinion. Not because it's not good for the spinal column, but you need to breathe. Um, so you have to turn your head one way or the other in order to actually be able to breathe with it. So you put torsion onto the spinal column. Um, you know, if you're a side sleeper, yep, exactly. Pillow in between the legs. Um, get that hug pillow. I got the big, you know, my wife's pregnant, so I got the big, she's got the nice big pillow for it, which is good, which is really good because it keeps everything as, as even as possible. Um, yeah, it's a great comment. How important is the proper alignment of the neck to proper sleep? I mean, it's 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 it is because it depends because it can affect the breathing. It can really affect your breathing, and that's the biggest. And that's the thing. If you're not breathing correctly, you're not you're not going to be able to sleep. You're, you know, you're, you're waking up. There's those micro. They see it um, on these people that have sleep apnea. They, um, you know, they watch. They do the sleep studies, and they're waking up every five sec six seconds because they're, you know, trying to catch their breath. Um, so yeah, I definitely think it's important. Any other any other comments on that? Nothing else on, on Zoom. Zoom. Anybody no, else on, on Zoom? Zoom? Last right? call. Last call. Um, I have a question. Yes. If we uh, charge our cell cycles when we are sleeping, I think it affects the quality of sleeping. Good question. Um, truly, I don't know how that affects. I would, I would assume it would. I haven't seen any. I haven't looked up the, the scientific studies about it yet. Um, I would assume it would, and especially even if, like, think about it. If it's um, say you get like text in the middle of the night, you know, it lights up, and you keep getting that light into it. Um, yeah. Put it. That's like that's why that's why we um, they developed alarm clocks that don't have light that you know like don't emit a light or they're really dark and then they can um, start to emit light to wake you up. Um, yeah, probably probably better have the cell phone maybe out of the you know out of the uh, uh, out of the room or on the other side of the room plugged in on the other side of the room like away. Um, yeah, probably yeah. That's, that's because what I'm somehow it's about sleep cycle, but they say you must charge your phone while. To know in the morning how how hour you are in deep sleep or how yeah. so I think this is not it <laughs> right. because sometimes you go to sleep but not so deep so you wake up as if you don't sleep right so to go on the deep sleep I think if you have enough you wake up more fresh you can start your day. Yeah. So quality of sleep also is very, very important. important. Yes, it's true because you can sleep twelve hours, but if you're waking up every, yes. you know, if you're yeah, if you're not getting into your actual, I didn't even talk about. There's tons of different cycles and things you're getting into, and different brain waves that happen throughout it. Um, yeah, it's really important to, to make sure that you're getting a good quality amount of sleep as well, yes. um, and that's why a lot of these things can help get a more beneficial quality of sleep because um, you won't fall you won't fall into deep sleeper. Um, yeah, I mean even the other, one of the other ones is. Um, alcohol. So making sure that we have no alcohol before we go to bed at all, because um, mm -hmm. then you're not going to get what's called REM sleep at all. And that REM sleep is really, really important to having your brain be able to connect itself. So um, any amounts of alcohol can 100% always affect your sleep any, any, at any time and during the day at all. Um, even if you have like, you know, like only if you say you drank the moment you wake up and you, you had a you know, stiff drink, 
um, it's still going to affect it later on the rest of the day and it affects your REM sleep. Um, yeah? Good questions. You guys are great. I love this. <laughs> Any other? Zoom? Good deal? Okay. So keep routine, it make you, because I'm, I, I've got used to read before, yeah. before sleeping. Yes. If I don't have a book or something, or I'm tripping, <coughs> I can't go to sleep because well, I just read. Yeah. And you train yourself too, and that's the same thing yeah. I do with myself, I read. I always make sure I'm reading something in chapter four bed at least to make it again. Because it, I'm falling asleep as I'm reading, which is great because it's yes. training. <laughs> yeah, really. So keep the routine, it makes it much easier. It makes it much easier. And if we have special time to go, let's say 10, 11, or whatever, yeah. you, your same body, time yeah, yeah, same time, it makes it, make it <coughs> easier if you have yes. the same time. Right? Same time you go to bed. I try to go to bed at the same time each night. Well, thank so you guys so much for, yeah. for having me. I hope thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>